Building a first LEGO League robot combines speed, precision, and flexibility. Today, we're going to have a look at a range of FLL robot designs made by my team, CA Phoenix Tech in Australia, and give you some designing tips for your next FLL robot. <laughs> Hello, I'm Mr. Code. First LEGO League tasks students to design and build a robot to play the robot game, a challenge that involves solving around 15 missions across a gaming table within two and a half minutes. Now, I have been coaching FLL teams since 2018, and our teams have been fortunate to have won several Champions Awards and Robot Performance Awards over the years. And some of the robots you see today have qualified for the Asia Pacific Open Championships in previous seasons. And you can check out my videos about eight pop over here. Now, if it is your first time, I would highly recommend starting off with the model Driving Base from the Spike Prime software. And this robot is a great starting point for your first design because it can already solve uh, some of the missions in an FLL game. And go to this website, which will open up a web version of Spike Prime, then go to Units, Competition Ready, and then look for the guided mission for First LEGO League. This activity changes with every new season, and the lesson even comes with the code to partially solve one of the first LEGO League missions. If you go into the build menu of the software, you can also find additional attachments that you can add to the driving base, including a lifting arm and various sensors. These are going to be great to start off with, but eventually you're going to want to build your own motorized parts to help you complete the missions. Now I spend a lot of time making robotics content videos just like these, so if you find the video interesting or helpful, please consider liking and subscribing to my channel. After you're familiar with the basics, it's time to design your own robot. The most important consideration when building your robot is to choose your wheels, and there are three major considerations for your wheels. The wheel diameter, the wheel thickness, and the track width. So the wheel diameter determines how far you can travel with each wheel rotation, and larger wheels will make your robot travel faster with the drawback of lower accuracy. Smaller wheels are more accurate but make your robot slower when going to further missions on the map. Now that the newer FLL maps have two launch areas, it is less important for robots to travel quickly across the map, which is why most teams nowadays will go for the smaller diameter wheels. Next, we have the wheel thickness. Thicker wheels will generally have better traction, but thinner wheels will have better turning accuracy. You want to use the thinnest wheel you can find without being so thin that it causes your robot to slip and lose traction. Finally, you have to consider your track width, or the distance your wheels are separated apart. The further apart your wheels, the more accurate the turns, but it does add bulk to your robot. You can see on this EV3 robot that it is built with driving accuracy in mind. Um, it has a super wide track width. You can see how far apart these wheels are, and it is using really small and thin rubber tires. This makes the robot really accurate, even without the use of any sensors. And although this is a pretty old design, I really like it, especially for new teams that don't want to rely heavily on sensors. Next up is planning the attachment points. When your team is just getting started, you might not have a dedicated attachment point and just add and remove pieces to your robot wherever you can. But more experienced teams will have fixed attachment points to save time and reduce mistakes. However, do you put the attachments onto the side of your robot on, or on the top of your robot? And you have to think about how difficult it is to swap the attachments and how effective they will be in solving the season's missions. The key to effectively planning your attachment point is to fully utilize all four of the robot's motors. And as you've seen in the advanced driving base, the robot can have an attachment point for each motor, but some teams can create one attachment point that utilizes both the motors at the same time. Now this robot here has both the attachment gears set really close together. During the robot game, students only need to swap out a single attachment that fits across both of the gears. And this saves time and reduces the potential for mistakes 
even when changing out the parts. You can see here that there's also this locking piece over here. So one of the main uh, drawbacks with uh, interchangeable parts like this is that after you've attached your um, your attachments, uh, it falls off really easily. Now this locking piece here is designed so that it clips on and locks the attachment in place. So all the team members have to do is pull that out uh, before they swap out the attachment. The main sensors for your robot should be the color sensor. And you should have at least one, if not two of these on your robot facing the ground to detect changes in color or follow the lines toward certain missions. Make sure they are not too close to the ground and not too far away so that the readings are accurate all the time. More experienced teams will also make sure that their color sensor is protected from external light interference. So adding a shell to cover the area where the sensor is looking is a great way to do this. Here is an example of a robot with covered color sensors. The large plates surrounding the robot helps keep the color sensors consistent and reliable no matter the lighting conditions around the tournament venue. You might also notice that the robot is in a very box-like shape, and that is because of our final design consideration, the size and the shape of your robot. Keeping your robot as small as possible is not only practical, but scores bonus points for your FLL game. Simply by having all of your robot equipment fit in a single launch area can give you extra points. Although most FLL robots can take any size and shape, a lot of experienced teams tend to design their robots with lots of flat surfaces, sometimes resembling a box, and this has some key advantages. Firstly, a box robot can square up onto the wall or any other straight surface around the map for navigational purposes. This adds to the robot's reliability and consistency when doing missions. Secondly, a box robot won't get entangled with game elements as often, making them better suited to moving around a cluttered map. And here you can see probably the smallest FLL robot that our students have ever designed. It is very small and boxy, making it great for navigating tight spaces. Down the bottom, you can see that there are our color sensors here, and there is almost no wasted space on this robot. It's using really small wheels uh, that are uh, put very close together. And uh, this, even the hub over here is completely covered. All the, all the cables and all the wires are completely covered up. And there you have it. Designing your FLL robot is all about balancing accuracy, flexibility, and simplicity. Start with the basics, like the driving base, and build up your robot's capabilities as you gain experience. Remember, the key to success in the robot game isn't just about having the most advanced robot. It is about having a robot that is reliable, easy to control, and adaptable to the missions in the season. As you continue to experiment and refine your designs, keep in mind the importance of accuracy in movement, the efficiency of your attachment points, the strategic use of sensors, and the overall size and shape of your robot. Every small improvement can make a big difference in your performance on the day of the competition. So go ahead and start building, testing, and tweaking your robot design. Don't be afraid to iterate and learn from every trial. And most importantly, have fun with the process. After all, the spirit of FLL is about exploration, creativity, and teamwork. My Robotics Center Creator Academy is dedicated to teaching kids about coding and robotics. If your team is looking for coaching advice, we provide remote coaching, building, and coding assistance for teams all around the world. Visit www.creatoracademy.au or drop me a message to find out more. Good luck with your next FLL season and happy building.